Welcome to the All Classics Restoration YouTube channel. My name is Dave and I've been running All Classics Restoration since 2003. Almost going on 20 years now in the business. Um, I decided to start doing restorations because I've always had an interest in older cars from the time I was very young. You could say it was almost bred into me growing up with a 57 Bel Air in the family that was my mother's car that she received for her graduation present in 1967, two years before I came around. But uh, the car is actually still in our family. Um, was originally purchased by a school teacher in New Jersey and then was bought by my mother's brother-in-law and then purchased from him from my grandfather, which he gave to her for her graduation. So the car is still in our family. I can't really talk too much about that end of it right now, but Later on, and as we go through some things, we may get a little chance to dive into that a little bit. But uh, I owe a lot of my background into cars to my father, who started me into this when I was 14 years old. He bought me a project car of my own, which was a 57 Bel Air also. And I proceeded as a young, inexperienced person to completely take the car apart down to the bare chassis and start rebuilding the car. I learned a lot of things then that I didn't do right. Now that I know what I'm doing, I look back on what I did and I think, wow, how did I ever even make that car what it was? I'd actually gotten the car to the point where it was finished to the point of paint and chassis-wise finished, but uh, never really got it done completely because life happened and kids and family and households come before your, your play toys, at least in my life they do. But uh, I also uh, was introduced to the Mopar world by a very good friend of mine back in Pennsylvania. And uh, he actually gave me a chance to buy my first car after I took a ride with him in his 69 GTX. It, it really turned me on to what those cars were all about. And I still have that car also after 33 years. So I don't tend to get rid of too many cars that are special to me, but I'm in no way a hoarder. Well, you may think different after looking around my shop. But anyhow, um, like I said, I, I have a background as a mechanic. From the time I was out of high school, I went to tech school, got a degree in auto mechanics and body work, and went into the automotive field as a line mechanic in different shops. I worked for dealerships before I moved out of the Northeast down here to Statesville, North Carolina. And uh, the reason for moving down here was I wanted to get into NASCAR. When I was still in New Jersey, I started helping out on a uh, dirt track team in the Trenton area. And we used to run at the track at East Windsor and sometimes down at Bridgeport. And I would take care of the body work and the paint work on the car in the off season and help around at the track when we go, go run on Friday nights. So that really fueled my desire to expand on that. And uh, at the time, NASCAR was a hot thing back in the late 90s. And I figured, well, if I'm going to do it, i got to be where they're at. So I made the move to North Carolina, and I knocked on every shop in the area, which is not far from where I live. At that time, they weren't. And uh, I was given a chance over at Ken Schrader Racing and worked for them for about a year and a half or so, and then moved on and did some piece work here and there to some other shops before I got out of the racing business because for a guy with a family and a mortgage, Unless you know people, it's really a, a cutthroat industry to be in. You never know when you're going to have a job or when you're going to get let go or what's going to happen with the team. So I wanted to get back to something more steady. So I went back to uh, being a mechanic for a few more years. And I had a shop built at my house during that time and was able to start doing some work here. I was, I was redoing a car for a friend of mine back in New Jersey, 68 Oldsmobile that he had. And I got looking at just the amount of time that I spent doing that and the love that I had for it was really more than what I had for doing uh, late model repairs at that time. So I, I looked at what I could make uh, doing restorations full time. And uh, with the overhead that I have here, which is very little, I figured I could still, I could pass along a quality product to customers without breaking their bank to get a nice project at the end. 
So that's why I got into this. That and the fact that I didn't want to have a boss anymore. If I wanted to go to a car show on a weekend, I didn't want to have to ask for that weekend off. So it gave me the freedom to do those things and opened up other opportunities for things. I've had a, I've had a pretty good time at this. Now, like I said, I've been almost 20 years full-time doing restorations, and it never ceases to amaze me how much work there is out there. My schedule for this year is busier than it's ever been. I have 10 different cars that need work done on them for this year, and four of them are full restoration projects. So those are the things that are going to be, uh, those are the things that are going to be highlighted on my channel for this year. We're going to look at all those projects. I've got a few of them here. Some of them haven't arrived yet. Some of them are off getting blast work done to them. So we'll get into those in another video, but just wanted to talk a little bit more about why I've decided after so many years to start a YouTube channel. And a lot of it has to do with people asking me what's going on in the shop and friends from back home wanting to know how things are and what I've been working on. So I figured, well, this will be a good way to let everybody see what I do in my business. And another reason, too, the only way that I really advertise for my business is having finished product at car shows. And this past year, with everything going on with COVID, car shows have almost been non-existent. So I've not been able to have any of my customers' cars out at shows, showing off my product. That tends to cut into your advertising. So this is another outlet for me to showcase what I do in the shop. And if there's somebody out there that you know that's looking to have a car done, or you yourself are looking to have a car done, you can always call me, send me a, a text message, get to me through YouTube, and we can discuss your project. Another reason, too, for uh, looking, at, looking at doing a channel was a lot of people see these cars being done on TV, and they're done in a shorter period of time, and they wonder why, when you take your car somewhere, why does it take a year or 18 months or however long it takes to get it done? It's not done in a week. Well, that's the magic of TV. This is reality. Reality is it takes a long time to disassemble a car, to go through what it needs, to get the parts ordered, to get the proper parts ordered. And then once the new parts come in, to make those new parts fit properly. And that's a big stickler of mine. There's a lot of new parts available for cars. The aftermarket industry has done a great job with getting product out there with replacement parts. But in the end, a lot of those parts don't fit like the originals. And that's fine for most cars and for most drivers. You can, you can make them fit to where they look presentable. But when you want to do a car that you want really nice or you want to go for a concourse restoration car, something that you want to compete with, a lot of times you've got to stick with your original parts. Or you have to find new old stock parts that are original from the manufacturer because nothing fits like original parts. Now, these new parts, we can always, we can always play with them and make them fit better, but it, that, again, adds to the time involved in the project. So this is why these projects take so long to get done. And material costs these days are going through the roof. Paint, paint prices are ridiculous for a good quality pr product that you want to put on the car. Something that's going to last 15, 20 years and not die back and fade out, those products cost a lot of money. Yeah, you can paint a car for $800 at, at Mako, but is it really going to last that long? Probably not. Maybe a couple years. I've got cars that I've finished 15, 16 years ago that still look like they did the day after I finished them. And that's because of the products that I use. I use good quality products here. Now, I'm, I have a shop at my house. I'm not renting somewhere, so I'm able to keep my overhead lower than most other shops, which I find that's my niche, kind of, because I can give you the same quality product that a big shop that charges X amount of dollars is going to charge but I don't have to because I don't have a $5,000 a month rent bill. So that's just a little bit about 
what my shop's about and what we're going to try and show you on these videos. I may be able to help you out with projects that you're working on, with things that I've learned through the years, and there may be people that tune into my channel that are into this kind of thing too and say, hey, I found out I can do, you can do this this way. You might want to try that. Man, I would really appreciate any tips and tricks that people want to want to send on to me too because anything that makes my job easier, I'm all for it. Okay, so I wanted to give you a little bit, little tour of my shop. Like I said, I had a shop built here in 2001 and really didn't have the intentions of working out of here full time at, at that time when I built the shop, but that's how it's turned out since 2003. This has been my place of work other than two years when I, I left here and I went to work for a good customer of mine that I had who was starting up a big car collection and he wanted to have me take care of his stuff um, and I convinced him that we needed to take in work from outside so that we could kind of pay the bills for the building and the shop and upkeep and everything and he liked the idea so I went to work for him for a couple years and found out that I didn't really like working for anybody anymore. I wanted to work for myself again. So we left under good terms. I came back here to work and things have been going pretty strong since I've been back home. I've really not had any lack of projects going on here at the shop. It's amazing to me still after almost 20 years that there is that much work out there on these old vehicles. So my shop is not very big, it's only 1,200 square foot, but it gets the job done. Uh, a couple years ago, I bought a lift, finally, after not having one for so long, and that has kind of made life easier. Um, I do have a paint booth that I built into the shop, and I'm able to get a pretty nice paint job out of it. Of course, majority of everything I do here gets sanded and buffed anyhow so most any imperfections that get happen to get into the clear coat come out uh, when you do the, the sanding and buffing process so it's really not been that big of a hindrance but I've got uh, the lift this is one of the projects that we're going to be featuring throughout our videos as we as we roll into all this it's a 1969 Mercedes 280 SL uh, that I was actually given the job through the other shop that I worked for. As you can see, I still have a good relationship with them. But again, not a very big shop, and it is small, but I'm able to do everything that I need to do in here. Uh, this is where my paint booth area is over here. I'm able to close the end of this up, and I get a good tight seal in here, and I can still get a clean paint job out of here. And if there happens to be a time, which isn't very often, that I'm not doing any paint work, I can actually open this wall up and I can get the majority of my workspace back again. But I've kind of got everything laid out in here to where I can get a good flow of work going. Um, I've got a couple sheds out back for storage that we keep all the disassembled car parts in because when you take a car apart, it takes up four times the amount of room that it did originally when it was all together. So you've got to have a lot of storage space around when you've got a lot of projects going on. I've got some other pieces here I'm working on. These are for a, a Volkswagen Beetle that I've painted already. That car body is gone. I'm just finishing up the remainder of the panels. So you probably won't see that whole car, but you may see the process of getting these panels finished and painted. So I've got quite a bit on my schedule this year. Like I said, I've got, uh, got about 10 different cars on the schedule to be worked on. And the one of those cars that we're going to work on, and you'll get a lot more information about it later, but it is for an uh, online magazine called Mopar Connection. And you can look at that by going to MoparConnection.com and look up Project Zombie. And you're going to see lots of that car feature here. We've got a whole lot of metal work to do to that car. It was in really bad shape. I've already started on it, so we're going to pick up from where I left off at. But that's, uh, we'll, we'll get some pictures of that car in our next video where I go around and I'm going to show you the different projects I've got here to work on. So I'm excited to get this channel going and I'm excited to share the projects that I'm working on. So tell your friends to like, subscribe, make comments if you've got any comments to make. Give me some ideas of what you might want to see, things you may want tips on how to do and hit that bell so you can see the new videos when they get posted. Thanks for watching.